We're about to do another P-Spice circuit schematic and I've included the instructions this time and so we can see what we're actually going to be doing while we're doing it. Um, I also have included a diagram of the circuit that we will be making and I will be going through the experimental values for the resistances that we are going to be using because we're not going to be using the theoretical values. Those are not as accurate. And we can also see that it's 55 degrees and clear so that's pretty good. So we're going to go inside of here, we're going to go to cadence release, uh, capture CIS. We're going to click OK once it's at Allegro PCB. We are then going to make a new project. We are just going to call it um, lab 522. And then we can save this into the desktop. And I'm going to change this location to be lab 522222 or final. And then I'm going to click OK to this. So this is my save location, and this is my lab title. And then I'm going to press OK and create a blank project. Once I'm in here, we can start actually building this. So we're going to go up to the little ant thing on the right, click place. We're going to be inside of here, and we're going to need to import all of these .obl and obj files. So we're going to open all of them. And now we can start building our circuit. So I'm going to go from left to right. We are going to use a V sign for our V1. So we can type in the V sign part, press enter, and then we'll get it right here. And then we can place it. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit. So this is going to be our V sign. Our V2 is going to be a VDC. We can press enter here, and then it's going to come out like this. Next, we need two resistors. We actually need three. So I'm going to have them all here. We have an R1, and I'll just place it right here. We then also have an R2, and then we're going to have a resistor over here, which we're going to call RF. Now, the experimental values are going to vary, but these were measured with a multimeter. For our R1, we're going to have 1.955K. For our R2, we are going to have 0.955K. And then for our RF, we are going to have 0.991K. And then we can press enter. So we have all of our values set. And now what we're going to do is we're also going to bring some grounds into here. We'll press OK. It's going to go here. It's going to go here. And then we're going to have one that goes right here. And this will make more sense once we connect our op amp and wire everything up. So let's do that. It's going to be U4 and then, or I think it's actually UA741. And this is the op amp that we're going to be using. It can be a little bit different. We're just going to place this right here. We want the positive and the negative sides to be flipped, so we're just going to click mirror vertically. And now we can start connecting some things. So I'm going to grab the wire, and then I'm going to connect this ground to here, this ground to here, and then this ground will go into here. Now this is going to go into, well this is actually going to go right here. And then these two are going to connect. And actually, uh, we'll delete this wire, and then we'll connect this like this. We'll go through here, through here. So that's a little bit off, but uh, that should be OK. And then we're going to connect this to here, and then this will go into here. And so that's uh, approximately how it should look. Probably bring our resistors back a little bit more, but it'll still be OK. We're going to connect these two. And now we need the voltage uh, inputs into ground. So we're also going to bring our grounds out here. We're going to click ground here, ground here, and then we want a VDC. So we can press enter, and we can put this right here, put this right here. We need to rotate both of these so that the sign is of the same way. So we can see that this is a V negative right here. So we're going to have a V negative here. Uh, we also need to rotate this ground. We're going to rotate this ground here as well. And then we're going to need to rotate this so that, ooh, I rotated it the wrong way. Um, this should just be rotated like this. And then we're going to rotate this one. And so we'll have a plus to the minus like this. And then we're going to go from here to here, from here, and then we're going to go into here. And then we can connect our output just like this, and it'll go into here. And so this is this, almost done. We need to change this, per the instructions, to 5VDC. 
And then we also need to change this to 5 VDC. And so this is what our circuit will look like. Using the same values from the previous video, which is voltage output of an op amp simulation with a parametric sweep. This is for the lab five. This is the uh, continuation of that, but we're not doing a parametric sweep in here. We're just adding these circuits in. We can click new simulation. It's going to be this little box right here where it says new simulation profile. We'll just call it lab 5.2. We'll click create. This little box should pop up. We'll click OK to this. And then from here, we are going to, because of the instructions, they're basically the same, step size and everything. We are going to use the same values that we used in the previous video. And we calculated these, we talked about it there. So we are just going to input them here. Our previous values were, for this part, 6 milliseconds and then 12 microseconds. We can press OK, and then we can press, press 1. Oh, and there was an error because of nested errors. And that's good, because I never assigned these. This V off should be 0. I don't know why I wrote it as an O. So that should be 0. This should be 2 volts, and then this frequency will be 500 hertz. It's important to make sure you assign those. I don't know what that is. Oh, that, that states there's an error there. Um, this should also, it didn't give us an error, but this should be 2 VDC. So if I look over all the measurements now, it seems that we are correct. So we can try running it again. We have gotten no errors. And we have output. And so this is the output. Um, and we can move these around just to see it a little bit better. We can also try to delete this error. Uh which it's not deleting, but we can move it. Oh, we can delete it. So we have deleted the error and we've gotten our values. So this is what our values are going to look like for here. We can open this little window and then it takes us to this uh, simulator. We are going to want to uh, trace something. So we're going to click trace, add trace, unclick power, unclick currents, because we don't need those. What we do want to trace is our V, V1, and this is said in the uh, later part of the instructions. We want to, for the output, on the same graph, show the input for voltage V1 and output voltage V0. So we're gonna have our VV1 here, and this is our VV1. Uh, we're going to click it, right click it, click trace property, and we will make the width a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then we're going to click file, or I'm sorry, we're gonna click trace, add trace, and then now we want our VV naught. So we'll come down a little bit because we have a lot of voltage. And then we will just find the voltage of our V naught, which I actually never made. And a matter of fact, this V1 is wrong too. So we can go back here and I'm totally forgetting it's pretty late right now, but we need to make a net alias for what we want to graph. We need a V naught, we'll press OK and we're going to bind it with this side right here. We're going to place uh, another net alias, and then we want V1. And so we'll press OK, and it's going to go right here with this V1. So this V1, and this is our V0. We can click Run PSPICE again, so we'll refresh it. We have a blank graph. We want to click Trace, Add Trace, and then we want to find our VV1. Press OK here, and this is what our VV1 will look like. We are going to click trace property and we want to make the width a little bit bigger. Then we're going to add a trace again. We now need to find our V, V naught. So we found it right here. We can press OK. And then it's going to look something like this. So if we hover over this, we can click uh, trace property and we want the width to be a little bit bigger. And we can press OK to this. And this is going to be our sweep in our piece by simulation. So we have our sweep done, and then we also have our circuit done. And that's how you'd go about creating this piece spice for the lab and using the software.